Okay, class, we're going to continue talking about our multigraphic, um, ortho, I'm sorry, orthographic multi view here, which are two dimensional sketches. I'm using this uh, sort of abstract object uh, as our example here, right? So this is not a, an actual thing, it's just a 3D printed uh, object with different features. Um, but the first thing we had talked about uh, in the last video here was choosing the front view, right? And it should be the view that shows the general shape of this object and minimizes the hidden features. So notice here, we've got this little cutout, but right? I can't see it, but I'm gonna say that this is our front view here. And you can imagine if you were uh, holding this out about arm's length, closing one eye and squinting, you would not have any depth information. So we would not see the sides, we would not see the top, but we would not see the bottom. And we would sketch just the edges that we were able to see. So it might look something like this, right? So notice here, I've got my edges drawn, right? And I'm doing this freehand, which is fine if this is how you want to do it as well, right? I have these edges here that you can see. And then to represent this edge, which is hidden from view, right? I would draw a dashed line here to show that there is a feature here that you cannot see from this uh, view and we'll call this the front view here. And these are the features that I can see, right? This would encapsulate all of my features. Now, when you choose the front view, that then <coughs> also defines the other placement of the views that you will also include. These will often be a side view, meaning what do, what do I see if I look at this from the side? So from the right-hand side, I would see something like this. I would place that next to, to the right of my front view. Notice it is aligned and to the right. These are both important. If I wanted to show a top view, what do I see from the top, right? I might see something like this, and it would go directly above the front view. Notice it is also aligned, right? Both the alignment and the placement are important. If you wanted to show a view that you run out of paper for, let's say I want to show the left-hand view, it would go over here. Oh, I don't have enough paper. Do not, I repeat, do not draw the view on another piece of paper and turn it in and say, oh, uh, the left-hand view is uh, it's on another piece of paper. That doesn't work. Right? The whole point is that these things are orthographic, meaning up, down, left, right, 90 degrees from each other. They must be next to the front view and they must be aligned properly. If you wanted to include a bottom view, that would go below the front view. Now, the way that I am showing this are all using what we call third angle uh, uh, viewing. That's common in the United States, which is a little unfortunate considering how multinational our class is this term, because most of the rest of the world <coughs> will use first angle viewing. And first angle assumes that the person stays still and I don't move the, I don't move when I'm looking at it. So if I say, hey, what's on the right hand side, I'd move the object and say, okay, this would be the right hand side. And in first angle, our first person viewing, this would be the left hand side. Now, the only difference here are that we switch, then we mirror image, right? If I wanna rotate this up, this would be the top. It looks at what I would call the bottom, it goes above. Right. So the sketches are all the same, but they will be placed uh, mirror image from each other if you are third or first uh, person uh, view. And in our class, and in the United States, we're going to use a third uh, person. So imagine that you're, you're looking from over here. What do you see? And you draw that on the right hand side. I'm looking from above. What do I see? I put that on the top, okay? All right, so uh, we're, we're gonna use this as our example. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple of other uh, things here as far as when you were sketching. First, all, first off, I wanna just uh, encourage you to use a standard wooden pencil. Um, <coughs> the reason for this is that you can change the line thickness fairly easily. If you use a mechanical pencil, this is a little bit more difficult. And if you use a pen, obviously that's not possible. Um, so we had already talked about a couple of different types of 
features here. First, we have visible features, right? These are the ones that you can see. We also have hidden features here. So we're gonna demark here with different types of line types that we're talking about here. The visible one would be a nice, just straight dark line. Right, hidden one. I also wanna talk about construction lines. Construction lines are lines that you're going to draw to help you construct the features that you're trying to demonstrate. So in uh, this thing, we have this these curved corners, right? So I've drawn out, this is mostly a rectangle here. And here we, we had talked about drawing our arcs and our curves. So I'm gonna assume that this is constant radius. That's the center point right here, right? I draw my diagonal. I mark off roughly 70%. Now I know if this is a, a circular feature, I'm gonna be tangent here, here, and here. So you can go ahead and make these tangent. And now you know where your features are going and you're essentially connecting the dots. When you do this, do this faint. This is your construction lines. Kind of connect the dots slowly. I would encourage you, move tip to tip, touch, but don't actually drag along the paper. Do this a couple times so you know where you're headed, and then slowly push down on the paper so that you leave a faint line, right? This is kind of good. And then you'll go in here, and notice I have a nice faint curve. This is my construction line. When I am ready, when I say I'm good, I'm done, this feature is nice, and I can go over it with a solid, hard, firm line to finish it off. And then you're essentially just tracing your construction line, okay? Now, when you do this, you'll notice now, I still have my construction lines. They're faint. Leave them. I like to see them. To me, this is like when you're in math class and you leave all of your work. How did you get your answer? Well, I can see it. I can show, show me your work. The construction lines are your work. So leave them. Just make sure that your final lines, whatever your final features are, are nice and dark so that it is very easy to distinguish between what is a construction line and what is a final visible line. So I'm just gonna write in here, this is nice faint, right? So there should be distinction. Now, if you happen to have a feature that is radially symmetric, what does that mean? That means that at some point I have a center axis of rotation and the feature revolves around that axis. I can put a center line, okay? So I have here a circular feature. So at the center of this cutout would be a center line. I could put that and denote it here. Center lines are sort of the last on the totem pole here. So if you don't put them in, it's, it's okay. But visible lines come first. Hidden lines would come next. Center lines would come last. When I say first, next, and last, what does that mean? If they happen to overlap, you show the visible line and not the hidden line. If I only have a hidden line and a center line, the hidden line takes precedence. Okay, if there's only one feature in the center line, then I show it. Okay, so where's an example we can see this? Uh, um, oh, here. Okay. Here's this hidden feature. Right, there's no other line here, no other feature above it. So we are essentially looking through the front face and looking at this hidden feature. If for some reason there was some other feature right here, this would get obscured and we would say the visible line takes precedence, even though there is a hidden feature directly behind it. Let's say there was a little cutout right here. Okay. Then the visible line takes precedence, hidden line only if there's no visible line directly over it. Okay, so this covers line types, choosing your front view and the placement of the other views. Oh, we're not done with this one. Oh, sorry, I'll finish that off. Um, and we talked about alignment. So if you want to end here, that is fine. I'm going to finish sketching this, um, and I will talk about a couple of different tricks uh, in the next video as I finish sketching this uh, to help you out while you're sketching as well.